Um, hi, uh, welcome to the November 18th meeting of the Centerline Futures Collaborative. We always start on time, uh, regardless of who shows up or don't show up. Uh, and uh, it's uh, Wednesday, November 18th at 11 a.m. And uh, the first thing we do is introductions. My name is Michael Multi, and I'm the, uh, one of the administrators of the uh, Centerline Futures Collaborative. Oh. Um, to my right, uh, John Nelson. Uh, David? David Seward, Hastings College of Law. Okay. Casey Asbury, Demonstration Gardens. Susan? Susan Bryan, uh, resident. Okay, uh, Jonathan Dunlop, Public Works. Betty Trainer, Friends of Bodica Park. Okay, welcome everybody, as it says up here. Uh, forgot to put the smile. <laughs> uh, all right, the first item on our agenda is the 5 m project. Uh, is there a Buffy uh, Tarbox tar here? Well, um, I don't see her, so I'll we'll move on to the next uh, item, which is uh, UC Hastings uh, Long Range Campus Plan. Good. Thank you very much, John. Michael. Stand, stand up. Yeah, I'm going to pull on that. Uh, yeah, behind it. Okay. Behind um, it. You've got to use the table for podium. For whatever you need. Is this also available online? If uh, anybody would like to see it online. Uh, well, thank you guys for inviting me back today. And I just want to give you an update on where we're at with our, our long range campus planning. And I'm happy to see DPW here. You know, they're really great in helping us uh, another project. So let me just give you an overview. This is our campus. It supports Hastings College of the Law with an enrollment of about 940 students, uh, 150 support staff, and 67 tenured faculty, about 80 uh, adjunct faculty. And we are a long time uh, partners with the community. We uh, institutionally have historically focused on public interest and public service. Uh, our students are highly engaged in the neighborhood. Uh, the civil justice clinic, uh, once led by Professor Mark Maris and now uh, Professor Scania Piamelli. Um, the community economic development um, clinic, which was very uh, active in the um, hospital project on Van Ness. Uh, we now have a, a, another program, which I want you guys to know about, keep on your radar screens, uh, the Social Enterprise Clinic, Professor Alina Ball, where she provides, she runs a clinic that provides legal support to nonprofits. Uh, they have supported uh, bylaw revisions, contract review, uh, project assessments for uh, Tenderloin Economic Development Project, for the Community Benefit District. Uh, they're looking at issues related to the rollout of a camera project in the neighborhood for safety and uh, some safety enhancements. So we're very, very active in the community. And that's relevant and important because it costs a lot of money for a law school nowadays. Uh, our tuition is $43,000 per year. It excludes living expenses. Um, and so we really try to provide career opportunities for students so that when they graduate, they're not obligated to simply go to the job that they pay them the most, pay off their debts, but they actually have the choices and options of perhaps going into public interest, public service, or corporate, the corporate world. It's important that they have those choices, and that's about cost. So that's a long-winded way of teaming up the discussion about our capital. Uh, this is our existing campus. We did a, a major study of where the deficiencies in the physical plant were located. And the conclusion was that our, our original 1953 building where about 80% of the teaching space is located. It was in need of substantial upgrade. But the HVAC system was dying. The electrical system needed to be replaced. And so that creates a real problem because we're going to conduct classes while we're doing that. The other major conclusion is that our existing student housing array located at 100 McAllister, the old 1929 air building, was in need of substantial upgrade. Uh, 
while significant sums have been spent to improve fire life safety, this building did not have the benefit of a structural upgrade. So there has not been a seismic strengthening of this facility. And you know, I think in this day and age, uh, that is not a desirable condition. It's paramount that we provide students with a safe, co-compliant um, housing stock that is within the financial means of, of a student and, and helps minimize their debt levels. So we concluded we've got a problem here and we have a problem here. So we were successful in uh, making applications to the state of California to fund a new academic building. So the state budget, the 2015 budget, the 2015-16 budget act includes an appropriation of uh, $37 million to create a new academic building at 333 Golden Gate Avenue, the site between the Eastman parking garage and the King Hall. 12,000 square feet footprint. So we are in the planning stages of uh, developing a program that would go into this site, we would connect the structures together, it would be a building that would, we would strive for uh, platinum lead certification, we would maximize uh, rooftop decks for uh, open space and garden functionality to replace some of the functionality that's on the site now, and we are slated to be in the market for a design build team in 2018. So uh, this project is being run through the State Department of General Services, and we are shooting for occupancy and, and total operations in time for the fall 2020 semester. And so that's roughly four years uh, down the road, two-year construction period. Uh, DPW. The other element of our Long Ridge campus going to be done was the streetscape improvements of uh, McAllister from between Larkin and uh, Leavenworth. That's complete. We were able to widen the sidewalks, do pedestrian safety improvements, uh, landscaping. Muhammad was, uh, was uh, I really owe him, I owe him big time. Wow. Muhammad was instrumental in, uh, we were running into some problems with Comcast. <laughs> Muhammad took care of it. It was great. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, that's done. so then, um, by virtue of us being in a position to replace the academic functionality that's currently housed here, that tees up the question, well then what do you do with the old site that you've done? Because if you don't need this building, it will not be necessary once this building is operational. So the long range plan includes a student housing element where we would build new student housing on this site, the, the, the demolished 190 McAllister, build new student housing, and ground floor functionality to activate the street forms, and fill it up, teeing up the opportunity to then vacate this building and either upgrade it or dispose of it. Now, a big question when you look at upgrading a 1929 high-rise, 30 stories tall, is how do you pay for that? And how do you pay for that using rents that students manage through their really limited budgets? So that's why we don't know, you know long-term whether that's going to be doable, the 100 McCall's to upgrade. It is, you know, if it were a, a, a condo tower or a luxury apartments, yeah, I think the rents could probably support it. But students have such limited financial means, and for students, it's all about debt. You know, it's the days of you know, mom and pa saving money to send a kid to law school, that's gone. For students, they, they load up with debt. The average debt for a Hastings grad, law school only, is $130,000. Law school only. So if we don't control cost and provide for you know, quality education, affordable, and the housing opportunities to keep the total cost of attendance down, these students will not have um, career options that would allow them to do public interest, public service, or other things for which we're known for, which is our strong spot. So right now, our students come into the area, we attract students from all over the state of California, and just like everybody else, they land here and they go, oh my God, where am I gonna live? And how the hell am I gonna afford it? 
and you know they, they stare these rents straight in the face, and they go to Craigslist, and uh, you know it's really a problem because it, it, students conclude well, I can't afford the basics. You know, forty grand, you know, okay, but if I have to pay you know, twenty five hundred dollars a month or three thousand dollars a month for my living quarters, that just blows me out of the water. You know. So that's that's a long way plan. In terms of timeline. Uh, again, this is the best case. 2020 completed, 2022 completed, 2026, 27, 28, who knows? That's to be determined. It's to be based on the financial analysis. Now we're in the middle of preparing our environmental documents, and I want to come back when we have the uh, a little bit further along in the CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act. Uh, and I've come along, I'll bring you know, any renderings we may have. Uh, we're doing the wind shadow analysis. Uh, we are, are looking at a structure of up to 140 feet here. Uh, we're doing shadow analysis up to 90 feet here, but probably to 80 to 85 feet. Um, and we really want to arrive at a outcome that really activates street levels. Because I think a, a totally valid criticism of Hastings is that if you look at our, our Golden Gate Avenue frontage, it's dead. There's, it's not activated. This is blank wall, this is blank wall, this isn't that much better. But we need to include activation strategies for our, the frontage here. And if we include this building in the scope of the work, we haven't decided yet whether this annex is going to be or not. We need to really figure out how do we activate this corner of Hyde and uh, Golden Gate. Because right now it's totally dead frontage. So questions? Yes. So you have you have the first part of the building uh, um, oh, no, no, you're not one, not one. Yeah. So that include the one that's behind it too? Well right now we're we are looking at this dock part first. This this part gets cooked in here. Okay, so you you you're not you have to, you haven't decided anything to do with the annex part. Uh, the annex, because the state is funding the place for this building, the governor indicated that he would, in the future, program $7 million to rehab this building. We're trying to figure out if that makes sense. If it would really be a value to, to rehab this building. Because right now they're connected. They were built at different times. This building is in far worse shape, the 1953 version. But the 1969-70 annex, um, you know, it, it needs uh, it needs upgrade as well. So we're figuring out whether, and in the, in the environmental review, we're considering this as a project variant. And this is the core project, but we may also look at this because under CEQA, we're obligated to uh, analyze all the foreseeable projects that flow from uh, the development decision. So Betty. Uh, one question I had, uh, the 1929 building, yeah. is that a landmark? Yes. Yeah. So the, the, it is a, a Category 1 building under the planning code, and that means you can't, um, you, you have to be, you have to preserve the exterior of the building. Oh. And there's no protection on the interiors of the building, but the exteriors are uh, sort of subject to uh, in historical protection. Yes. Is there any time when the students will not be in school and occupying their, their rooms, their, their, their uh, area? Uh, the answer to that is no, there will be, there will be no periods of empty, um, there will be no periods requiring students to place this place. Okay, then you can't go Airbnb in the off season. Okay, that's. <laughs> well, right now, even the housing market is so tight, even during the summer months, we we're uh -huh. almost at 100%. Uh -huh. at uh, 100 McAllister. Uh -huh. We get students who come in from the East Coast, like Yale, the Yale, the Yale, the Harvard kids, the Yale kids who come into town to do summer uh, clerkships at uh -huh. the downtown law firms. And, you know, so we, we will rent to them. But we are really uh -huh. students, student uh, housing. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. right. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a problem because, you know, our, the, the students compete against uh, the staff at Twitter and uh, Zendesk, and they're all competing for the same housing stock that we compete for. So to the extent that we can provide housing, uh, off 
offload that demand from the general marketplace, it's, it's, a, it's a win. Mm -hmm. uh, on a cloud hall, I don't know, is cloud hall also the uh, part of that next to it, the um, theater? Yeah, that's a great hall, yeah. Great, okay, great hall. So, do you have any plans for that? Because, I mean, I know you might be, you know, we have no plans. No plans. Well, how did I put this? We, I have a lot of plans. <laughs> I have a lot, <laughs> lot of plans. I have a lot of plans. Just have no ability to fund it. Okay, so uh, the Great Hall is, is you've never seen it, it's a dramatic place, it's kind of gothic decay, but it has a lot of issues with hazmat, asbestos, um, and the numbers that we look at, uh, the numbers are, this was before the escalation, you know, 12 to 20 million dollars to rehab it. So, we have to figure it out. We have to do something with the Great Hall. Uh, right now, we just, as part of the streetscape work, we removed the plywood, we planted, uh, did the planning up there, hope we get a chance to see it. We planted Bougainvillea in front of the opening, it looks really nice. But uh, the short answer, uh, John, to the question is, we don't have anything substantive. And if, uh, we showed it to all the theater groups, uh, we showed it around. For Hastings, the primary objective is utilization. So if somebody were to come in with a bunch of capital and say, oh, we'd love to renovate your great hall and use it for X, Y, or Z, if it were a compatible use, we would say, yeah, go ahead, because it would provide a lot of benefits to the overall structure. But we are receptive to need to repurpose the great hall. At least I don't know how. Uh, anything? Anything else, folks? Uh, other neighborhood stuff? Uh, one thing, you know, ninth, uh, those little micro units at ninth and Mission. Yeah. I know uh, the conservatory getting long-term lease for them for a certain number of floors for their students. Are you doing anything like that for your students? I mean, trying to get or well, build more of those type of things. The student, for students, it does make sense. Yeah, we looked at those. Like I, I got the tour, the Patrick Kennedy, uh, the, the Paramount. The, I think what it's called. But yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. Those units look perfect. Yeah. About 275, 300 square feet. Um, the graduate student population tends to not, they don't like to be double occupants. They like, they like their own, you know, their own self. Yeah, yeah. And so it's perfect because yeah. it has their own bathroom, their microwave. With those units, with that type of package, they really need to put effort into the shared spaces, the common spaces. And the social areas because there's not a lot of opportunity. You can't fit you know, more than two people in the bank or more students. But yes, we're looking at those because they're they can be delivered again at, at, at rents that, that are manageable for students. Yeah. Now <clears throat> to outfit these these apartments and everything, uh, have you? I mean, there was a airstream used to have the greatest way of storing everything in their places and if you know get somebody with that kind of mindset for 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 the kids to be able to stow their stuff well i think we're probably going to have to do storage in the basement uh -huh. because you know those units they, they they are every inch is sort of really thought out it's uh -huh. sort of like the amtrak thing too yeah right? um and bike cages in the basement is it's just uh -huh. limited opportunity yeah. but we're gonna have to really maximize roof roof space Mm -hmm. The roof deck, terracing, and all that. So mm -hmm. um, we'll sell. I'll have more meat and potatoes probably in January, February, as we progress with the uh, CEQA. Mm -hmm. We'll be having a lot of uh, scoping meetings mm -hmm. to sort of flesh it all out for you guys. And uh, I really encourage and, and want to incorporate your views, suggestions, and uh, input. Thank you. I'm going to leave these here. I, I really want my comment, and that is one of the uh, issues that keeps on coming up uh, about all these buildings being built in this neighborhood is they don't fit the character of the neighborhood. Um, they're basically modernized pieces of glass or whatever, and they have no reality to uh, the, uh, the, the ornate feeling of the neighborhood as for being a 100-year-old you know, neighborhood. And, uh, we, but the planning commission keeps on saying that's okay. 
but you're not under the jurisdiction per se of the planning